this is a very exciting show. This is history is here to help uh, every every couple of Thursdays at 11, uh, make that 12. And uh, this one is special because we've been lining up for this for a long time. The title today is Classical Origins of Democracy in the West. You know, because we, you know, we live, we seem to live in a, in, a, in a time where everybody's focused on what happened today. We don't necessarily connect the dots to last week, much less to last, last millennia. And that's what we need to do. We need to see how humankind has evolved and how democracy has evolved over the, the life of humankind, especially back to the classics. So what could be more appropriate than talk to a classicist? When you're talking about history, do the broad sweep, right? As Sandy Schwartz, as a classicist at UH Manoa, and she is going to help us understand the, the grand sweep of democracy in Western life. And in global life, for that matter, because it all it all started in Europe. Sandy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Okay, my pleasure. I love talking about this topic. Uh, so, I uh, what I'd like to do um, today is uh, to talk about the foundations of what we know as democracy. Uh, the the etymology. Uh, Demos means a um, sit, is a village, and Kratos, which is where we get crassy, um, democracy uh, is the is the the Kratos means power, power of the people. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so um, so. Uh, democracy began in very humble places uh, where people uh, around the Aegean Sea and also in the Mediterranean, uh, they settled in areas where they could make a go of, um, of building a, 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 a community and, and a town. Uh, there are many uh, uh, um, archaeologists have have um, found uh, hundreds of different uh, towns along the along the in this area. Uh, the in the Mediterranean Sea, the Mediterranean Sea was a connective network, and so we have um, parallels and comparisons that help us understand um, the real um, cultural phenomenon uh, that that people had um, developed around uh, the 7th century BCE. Uh, the 7th century BCE was a, a period of time uh, when uh, new tools were being um, uh, developed, uh, particularly the tools of, um, of iron. And that enabled people in the, uh, in, in the Mediterranean basin to um, to uh, uh, to um, to be able to use agricultural tools and um, develop um, you know ability an ability to grow your population. So that's the foundational part. The the that agriculture is the foundation. And as um, these cities begin to began to grow, and families could support more children, um, they would um, they would have a larger the the um, many of the polis would become larger and larger, and that that's just the simple um, uh, way of understanding how these polis developed. Now, some of the well, many they, of the, they could have been they could have been. Tyrannies just as easily. They could have been brutal dictatorships just as easily. Okay. But something something happened in Greece. To something make them happened in Greece. Yeah. Yes, something happened in Greece. When these cities started to become larger, there would be more specialization, um, and that would enable um, more wealth to come into the city. And uh, there was. Um, these communities, um, the polis, were mostly um, egalitarian in, in the early periods. You know, people would have the same size houses. They would probably have the same uh, homogeneity. Um, families would be coming together. But once the, 
once in the sixth century, as the um, boom in development of cities, um, there was a there was a really important um, uh, phenomenon, and that was there had to be some sort of coordination in the um, in the management of the city. So at first, um, you know, we have this homogeneous uh, system, but then what happened afterwards was um, a group of people, um, typically the ones, the people who were, sur who surrounded usually a big man uh, and- Physi A physically big man. Not necessarily <laughs> physically big men, but it it was you know there were there were individuals who could um, amass a um, coterie of of um, supporters uh, around this big man, which we call a tyrant. Now the word tyrant actually doesn't come from the from the uh, Greek or Latin words. Um, that would be later on. A tyrant was um, a, a, a name uh, for a Phoenician um, uh, leader. And, they call, and, the, and the Greeks had no um, experience of that. And so they, they um, picked the, the, the name from the Phoenicians, which was called a Tehran, and from there, that became the tyrant. So the Phoenicians were earlier in the in the city building phase than the Greeks were. The, of course, the the Phoenicians and the Greeks had communication uh, across the Mediterranean. So uh, what what typically happened uh, in the in these uh, pole poles was that there were um, uh, there, there was typically a an aristocracy, you know, the people who surrounded the tyrant. We'll call them him the tyrant now. And um, no, I won't say it's a tyrant. It's the aristocracy. Aristocracies are very competitive. Uh, and what happened was that um, when um, the city became very large and prosperous. Um, the the uh, people, the farmers, the artisans, the tradesmen, um, they then um, turned to the tyrant, and they are they they turned to the the aristocracy, and um, an aristocrat would typically break from the aristocracy, and. Um, ally himself to the um, the worker the workers of the polis, the tradesmen, the craftsmen, and agricultural workers. And so, um, what happened was that the um, the tradesmen, the workers, um, lifted a, um, a one of the aristocracy, uh, one of the uh, one of the members of the aristocracy would take the the workers into um, their own um, uh, union. I guess it, it's kind of like a union. Um, so uh, so the um, so what happened was that uh, over uh, over the century, the sixth century, more and more towns began to throw off the aristocracy and to bring in a, 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 a singular individual who would take control of leading the, um, the workers that, you know, up until then, you know, the aristocracy just didn't even pay attention to them. So with this new individual, uh, he could then um, amass power and and um, uh, uh, and um, and he could amass power from the workers, and and he could then um, create a new system. 
So there was a kind of um, this this process of um, of of uh, of uh, having a new kind of system. It was kind of like a revolution in a in a way, and the tyrant was the 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 hero. Uh, so well, it was, uh, but it was participatory. Right. It, it was, was democracy. It was, it was the voice of the people. I mean, uh, was it a was it a utopian world we're talking about, or no, maybe a tyrannical not at one? At all. It was okay. not at all um, utopian. Not at all. Um, they had all of their um, the political dynamics in each of the cities. Um, in many of the cities, some of them differed uh, in in different ways. Uh, but there was um, a sense that um, that the uh, that that um, the, the there could be a strong man who would help raise the workers um, and, and to break the aristocracy. Okay, um, so in so the the the, the first. Thing you have to know is that tyrants aren't necessarily bad in ancient Greece. It was a way of breaking the aristocracy. So um, there, uh, so uh, there was a, a wave of these kinds of um, new settlements, new kinds of settlements, and the the. Um, and the and so the these polis uh, came to um, dominate the um, the 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 community, the members of the city. So um, uh, the most um, uh, familiar uh, uh, um, story about um, uh, the um, the tyranny. In, in ancient Greece, uh, what came about when um, the uh, when there was a tyrant in Athens, his name was Pisistratus, and uh, he had uh, overseas contacts that could uh, prop him up and and um, bring um, bring him to. Um, the nascent city of Athens. Uh, Pisistratus was um, was good for Athens. Uh, he had those kinds of of connections uh, in foreign places, and um, and he settled in um, Athens. Now. Um, it's it's kind of it goes back and forth. The story of of how these uh, cities grow goes back and forth, of course. But, um, but Athens obviously grew to be the biggest city, yes, and the the city that had some influence or even domination over other polices, right? And and, and the and the country, if you will, you want to call it a country uh, of Greece at the time. Right. So um, there were many uh, there were many cities in in um, in Greece uh, that were vying to um, to grow in their area, and and that then created a, a, a significant um, military um, battles. Um, Athen you know, Greece is very rocky. Um, there aren't a lot a lot of large plains. Um, and so the, in the sixth century, there were more and more people trying to get land grabs. So, um, so when Pisistratus came into Athens, um, he, uh, he found that, the, um, that there were um, different um, communities in the hilly areas of, of um, of Attica. Attica is the um, is the province where Athens is. Uh, um, Pisistratus uh, uh, made a grand plan 
to impress the citizens of Athens by uh, uh, finding a very tall woman. He dressed her up as the goddess Athena, and he took a chariot and brought her to Athens. And this was like a great PR um, uh, uh, coup for Pisistratus. But um, the problem with Athens was that um, there were different uh, areas of Athens and different, um, and each, and the people who lived in those areas had different um, uh, uh, ideas. So, for example, there was a, a, a one third of Attica was um, uh, divided into um, uh, areas around the um, the the Aegean. Um, then there was another area where the the hilly areas um, were, and people populated this whole area. And it was it was until uh, Pisistratus came with his um, uh, coup to bring this dressed up Athena to Athens, um, this became his, um, his, uh, his um, program of uniting all of Attica. So uh, uh, earlier- so he, had to, he had to make deals. He had to he make had to deals make with deals. all the people on the hills deals. there. Right. And he, he had, had to, he had to offer them an opportunity to participate yeah. against the origins of democracy in Greece, no? Right, right. So uh, Pisistratus was the first tyrant. Um, of course, uh, tyrants don't last long, especially when um, there are people uh, or the, the um, sons of tyrants end up uh, um, becoming the new tyrants. So uh, Pisistratus's sons had um, kind of um, broken down uh, what the what Pisistratus had built, and so um, Pi, uh, so the um, let me let me think. Uh, so the so Pis so Pisistratus's sons um, came to the Panathenaic procession in Athens, which was one of the great, uh, um, uh, parades in Athens. And, uh, at the head of the parade, um, one of the sons of Pisistratus, uh, was assassinated. And so that then all bets were off, uh, uh, and the people of Athens who had been subjected to the uh, depredations of the sons of Pis Pisistratus, uh, they then decided that uh, the Athenian citizens themselves decided that they needed to, to organize a new kind of political system. And so, uh, so the the Spartans, the Spartans were the enemies of Athens, uh, and many people in Athens um, were pro-Spartan because Spartan had a very well-run system. It was a very military, militaristic city, and so the uh, so there was a. Um, a, uh, a faction in Athens that wanted to have a um, military dictatorship like, Ath like Spartan Sparta had. And then um, other people in Athens um, uh, decided that they would make a new kind of organization, of a political organization. And from that, came from uh, it, that then came to uh, a figure in Athens. There are always um, these amazing um, uh, leaders in Athens. Um, and and the Athenian people um, really had a, an extraordinary sense of their, responsibilities uh, to their, their deems, 
uh, to the the town um, to their they they had um, the Panathenaic uh, 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 festival was part of this um, way of getting the people of Athens to understand what um, what Athens was. So it, uh, it, it was the perfect storm. It was all the pieces were in place. Um, it didn't have to happen. Uh, almost like a, a mutation uh, that you have all these pieces in place and then one day some magical thing happens, some twist of history, some personalities <laughs> You know, in, in contradiction to each other, in contention with each other, and and then bingo, magic, and it lights up, and it is right. democracy. It is the finest thing. Am I right? It is right. the finest thing that has happened up to that point in human history, right, right there, almost by accident in Athens. Wow. Right. And so, then there, yeah. there was a period of time in which it developed and it became even more refined. Am I right? Um, yes, and it still went back and forth. But and, and then in the uh, fifth century, you the the Athenian citizens really took it upon themselves to make their city. Um, theater was an important aspect of Athens. Um, Athenian playwrights um, wrote hundreds of plays uh, that really uh, um, brought a, a, a mirror to the Athenian citizens so that they could see themselves and they could understand what the values were of Athens. What a lovely thought. So it wasn't just entertainment. They were, nope. It was actually a, a, a forerunner of the First Amendment. They were speaking honestly about what was happening to them as a political organization. Right. They they and and they the they took it seriously. They took the theater very seriously because it had the the most profound values to be um, supported throughout the um, the the Athenian um, citizenship. Of course. Uh, uh, women, some women went to the theater, um, some didn't. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, plays that have to do with gender and sexuality and um, the and the family and the, you know, how, how things worked. Um, all these great um, classical drama that we have is really a kind, it was really a kind of uh, way of teaching the masses about what Athens was. And it gave if, if you're a classicist, yeah. there's no better way to find out the way the Greeks lived than reading their plays. Right, right, absolutely. And archae, I mean, there's amazing archaeology that uh, around the the foothill of the Acropolis, the Acropolis was a, a uh, the uh, topmost hill in Athens, um, that we uh, archaeologists have have um, have uh, excavated the areas around the Acropolis, and and you can see in Athens today. If you can go, they have plexiglass where you can see into the houses of 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 Athens. And the interesting thing about the houses of Athens was that they were all the same size. It was egalitarian. Mm. And 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 um and How and their work would that mean that there was a there was a, a, a value, um a, a point of uh, a, a a limitation. In other words, if I if I was a wise guy and I was a trader uh, using those ports uh, in, in Greece to make money and selling things and importing, exporting, what have you. And I made money. But I want and I wanted to build a house three times the size of my neighbor. There had to be a, a limitation, a, a, right. a cultural limitation where people would people would stop me from doing that somehow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they um, uh, the Athenians um, uh, they had courts. Um, they uh, uh, they had um, uh, uh, elections. Um, they ran. They were. Um, they try to randomize um, uh, 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 people who would go into the courts. Um, it, it's it's an amazing um, uh, story about how the Athenians um, were able to figure out a system um, that would be fair to everyone. What about brutality? What about unfairness? What about um, you know the dark side? Was there a dark side? And uh, there in, was uh, right yeah. there. There was slavery, of course. Then in the ancient world, slavery was endemic. Um, most houses had a slave. Um, many uh, slaves had to work in the fields. Uh, so we, you know, we have this, you know utopia on the hill, but it wasn't really a utopia on the hill. Um, there were also political problems, factionalism. Uh, there, there was, um, there were traitors. Um, one of the most famous of the traitors uh, was Alcibiades. Um, he convinced uh, the Athenian Navy to go to Sicily and, um, and he really botched that job. Um, and th that is in um, Thucydides's history of the Peloponnesian War. Um, so so there, were, there were always people who like the early tyrants, they, always, they wanted to try to get the golden ring, I guess you could say, um, and try to get all the power of Athens. Because when you have this um, egalitarian system, there's always a threat that a tyrant can come in again. Um, so, yeah. In, in so this that system, was, Sunday, in this system, was there a formalized um, rotation, a, a change of management um, a, uh, a transfer of power, or was it, you know, power as long as you could hold on to it? Um, it in during the period of classical Athens, um, the the citizens really took, as I as I said before, they took responsibility for for their actions. In Athens, there's a there there was a name for someone who didn't want to participate in the government. And that the name of that person or the, the type of person it was, they called him an idiotes, which okay, means an idiot, which which means someone who who does not go with the community, an idiotase. And it was frowned upon. It was absolutely frowned upon. Um, in, in Athens, again, you know, you can, um, you, you must go to Athens at some time in your life, but you can, what you can see is that um, the, 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 the citizens in Athens spent the day outside all the time, you know, there were stoas, there were, you know, lanais as we would call it. But, but, uh, and, and when I first came here to um, Hawaii, I remember going to the Fort Street Mall and um, there were all these Filipino men and they would sit there on the benches by, by Ross's and all day long, they would sit and they would talk, they would gossip. And and that that to me when I first uh, came to 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 um, to Honolulu, it really it really made me feel that I was in Athens because people were walking around. You'd see people face to face. You'd bump into each other, and and so in a way, um, the Athenians were very gregarious. But if anyone didn't want to be part of that. 
you know, people would be suspicious of that. Yeah. Um, what about public spaces? Public spaces, okay. uh, you know, um, I, I have I have looked at uh, materials covering public spaces in Rome, which you and I will have to talk about next time. But right. public spaces found to me very important in, in yeah. a community, in a, in, an, um, in, a, in a country, in a, in a culture like this, yeah. because you, you have that gregarious face-to-face -face kind mm -hmm. of experience, very healthy, very mm, collaborative. Um, and so uh, did they understand the value? I, I, I really appreciate they understood the value of plays, um, but what about public spaces as a place to gather and, and, and exchange ideas? Well, there, there was the Agora, the marketplace, <laughs> and um, and you know that there would there would be fresh markets, you know, the, um, all all over all over the agora, and, and and that's what people did. They just hung out in the agora. Um, men mostly, uh, women less so. Uh, women were expected to stay at home. Uh, but you know there were other market women who would who would be able to um, uh, to you know practice their trade and so forth. Uh, so so the agora would would have been a, a real. It, I think the agora when you think about it, when I think of Aloha Stadium, you know, when you have the the swap meet, that's what it would be, and that's what it it, it would have been like. And, <laughs> um, so, well, so that, here we are, we're in the top of the world, right? Am I right to say that there's really no place in Europe that, that is this uh, socially advanced? Um, and, and these people are having, you know, subject to a few problems uh, that maybe they didn't see it as problems, but a few issues that we would see as issues now. They were leading a pretty good life. Um, and, you know, person for person, it wasn't a bad time. Uh, and, 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 and at least in substantial part, that was because they had a system in which they all participated or could participate. Right. Um, and we're, we're going to have to get off soon, but I wonder if you could sort of set the stage for us about how this um, Halcyon moment in Greek history um, declined and how the ideas and to the extent the ideas passed to Rome possibly through trade or, or through through cities and the Peloponnesian Wars, what have you, how these ideas passed around the Mediterranean and wound up in Rome from Greece and how long that yeah. took? Um, well, I, I think that, uh, um, how, how, let me see how I, I, how I can answer this um, quickly. Uh, so, um, uh, Athens had developed a major empire uh, in the Aegean Sea and around the Mediterranean. Uh, the Athenians uh, had um, two wars against the Persians and, uh, and that then um, enabled the Athenians to build a massive fleet. Um, I, I I don't think I can do it justice in 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 such a short time. But... No, just, just set the stage for us. That's all. Okay. So um, so Athens grew because they had to build ships, and um, and eventually um, uh, the Athenians created an empire within the Aegean. Now the Aegean Sea has lots of islands, uh, coastal areas on what's Turkey today. Um, and so uh, there, were, there were many uh, polis on the Eastern coast of the Aegean Sea as well. Uh, and so Athens um, created a, a, a fleet of ships called triremes. And with that, um, the, the Athenians were able to go shake down the smaller polis around the Aegean Sea. And, uh, and so um, uh, Athens um, became a major 
producer um, throughout the Aegean. They um, and and uh, and the and then when the Persians came in um, to try to um, take over um, Greece. Uh, uh, that was, those were the Persian Wars. Um, so Athens always, um, uh, always looked to the sea to get what they needed. Um, Athens was, Athens wasn't, uh, I mean, their homegrown um, uh, agricultural produce was basically olive oil. Um, and but they had to, and they used that to trade um, throughout the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so, um, so Athens um, had become the premier city around the Aegean Sea, and um, and so uh, and it stayed that way um, in 432 BCE. Uh, one of the most amazing orators uh, came to the Athenian uh, assembly and um, and he uh, um, uh, 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 he his name was uh, Pericles uh, and he was the leader of Athens and um, and it and it's kind of um, Sometimes it's kind of hard to understand what the impact was of having such an uh, a, a, an adept leader um, who was um, completely patriotic. He wasn't a tyrant. He was he was the mouthpiece of of Athens, and so that really became a, a, a hallmark. Of, of Athens. Athens came to be the place where the ideas were, where the, um, where the ideas of, you know, whatever, uh, what, what does uh, uh, Pericles say? He said, we, he said, we are the school of Hellas. And that, um, Helen, the, the school of Greece, um, and that came to be in in later generations the memory of Athens. Um, uh, Pericles was the uh, author of the beautiful uh, Parthenon, or the he 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 didn't uh, build the Parthenon, but he um, marshaled all the resources of Athens to build the, uh, the temple of Athena on the Acropolis. And he also was the architect of building the, the fleets um, that enabled uh, Athens to, um, to thrive. So- Why don't we leave it there, Sandy? Why yeah. don't we leave it there? Okay. That's a great place to leave it because okay. we, you know, we have this uh, uh, sort of the top of the world moment for uh, for Greece under Pericles, yeah, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna address two questions. We're gonna address the question of how all of this was um, transferred to and to the extent accepted by Rome uh, yeah. over a period of time, uh, and uh, and also a bigger question for our next discussion. Really important is which of you know some of these names are familiar. So yeah, which which of these concepts, which of these social constructs. That would that they somehow came together during during the time of Greece and the time of Rome. Uh, do we have in our in our society today? Wow. Um, okay. So let's let's schedule another show soon. Uh, okay. I, 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 I didn't want to try to cover too much today. I think yeah. we covered a lot of good <laughs> stuff. Next time we'll go forward and cover more. Thank okay. you so much. Sandy All right. Schwartz, thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you.